The Raspad from SunFounder is a Raspberry Pi powered tablet aimed at the maker market. As of the time this video was made, the Raspad's Kickstarter campaign had raised over $460,000 with 13 days to go. Shortly after the Kickstarter campaign ends, the Raspad will go on sale to the general public with initial units being delivered in May of 2018. Now, knowing how many Pi projects we do here at How Chew, SunFounder sent us a pre production unit to check out. So here's our review of the SunFounder Raspad. The Raspad allows you to make your Pi projects truly portable with its all in one enclosure packing a 5,000 milliamp hour lithium polymer battery. In the box, you get the Raspad itself, an AC adapter, an SD card preloaded with a customized version of Raspbian, and if you chose the right Kickstarter reward, a Raspberry Pi 3. On first glance, the Raspad is aesthetically pleasing and feels good to the touch. It sort of looks like an iPad, a lot like an iPad in fact, but only from the top. It's not as thin as an iPad, but it isn't meant to be. It's meant to be carried around for limited periods of time and then set on your desk. Also, it needs to hold a Raspberry Pi, so it can't be that thin. It's definitely heavier than an iPad, but it's still very portable and its wedge shape makes it easy to hold. The case is nice and solid and doesn't feel cheap at all. It has some heft to it and it feels like something that would survive a decent fall, though I'm not going to test this. Maybe later. Along the top, it has a pair of dual 2 watt speakers providing stereo sound, though they don't get terribly loud. On the right side, we have a power button, something that's always been conspicuously missing from the Raspberry Pi itself. If you're interested, we also created a guide for adding a power button to any Pi project, and I'll leave a link in the video description. Anyways, here we can also find a screen brightness toggle switch. First I thought this was a volume control, which makes more sense, and it can definitely be remapped with a bit of hacking. But after messing around with the unit for a while, I now understand why it controls screen brightness instead. More on that later. There's also an HDMI input, which allows you to use the Raspad as the display for a separate device. Seriously, I have no idea why you'd want to do this. It would make more sense if it were an HDMI output so you could connect your Pi easily to your TV without removing it from the case. Anyways, there's also a micro USB input so you can use the touch screen to control another device. This, this is definitely another edge use case, but I'm sure somebody will make use of it. Finally, there's a DC power input for connecting the included AC adapter. On the bottom, there's a sliding panel that reveals an opening for your Pi. Just slide the cover off, connect the HDMI and micro USB power cables to your Pi and drop it into place. A spacer holds it snugly without the need for screws. Neat. Now since the Raspad is really meant for developing all kinds of Pi projects, there's also a slot for running a GPIO extension cable to connect various Pi things. This is a great feature. The normal kit doesn't come with the extension cable itself, but these rainbow cables only cost a few dollars anyways. Well, my cable is more of a cloudy day cable, but I digress. After putting your Pi in place, you'll have access to all your key Pi ports from the outside, including all four USB ports for connecting USB peripherals like game controllers and other equipment. And of course, there's an Ethernet port for connecting your Pi to a wired network in case your house is made of lead or if Wi-Fi isn't your thing. After pressing the power button to turn the unit on, I was pleasantly surprised by a few things. Four power LEDs in the front of the Raspad show you how full your battery is. I'm not sure why they're flashing though, I don't think they're supposed to do that. But then again, this is a pre-production unit. The Raspad boots immediately into Raspbian, meaning the SD card is already formatted and configured with some software you'll want to use. There's literally no setup. Another thing that surprised me was that the touchscreen didn't work. That is, until I realized that you have to move the screen's USB cable from its holder and into the Pi. The pre-production unit we received had no instructions, so this wasn't as obvious as you might think. Anyways, from here on out, it's plug and play. I love when things just work. The screen is a 10.1 inch IPS LCD display and is bright and vibrant, boasting a respectable, though not crazy, 1280 by 800 pixel resolution. Because this is an IPS display, the screen has truer colors than non-IPS displays and is clearly visible from many different viewing angles. It responds nicely to touch, allowing up to 10 simultaneous touch points. A similar screen alone would cost well over $100. As I said earlier, the Raspad contains a 5,000 milliamp hour LiPo battery, which the manufacturer states will run the unit for about five hours. I'm a bit skeptical about this claim. I've done a lot of battery operated Pi projects and running a Pi 3 plus a large screen at full brightness for five hours with a 5,000 milliamp hour battery is a bit dubious. This is probably why the toggle switch on the side is a brightness control instead of a volume control. You can expect at least three hours though. I did notice a few weird issues with the unit I received, like very faint red flickering lines on the screen and an undervolt warning indicator while charging. Now, what can you do with it? Well, just about anything you can normally do with a Pi. 
I always have a Pi plugged in at my desk for working on various projects and testing things out, but I have to switch my monitor over from my MacBook to my Pi when doing this. It's kind of a pain in the ass. Uh, it's really cool to have a dedicated unit on my desk to use for such things, like random projects. Of course, you can also make this into a portable Raspberry Pi gaming station with a large display by installing RetroPie and connecting a couple controllers. Or perhaps you want to save some money and build your own telepresence robot, or control your 3D printer, or build your own wall-mounted smart house controller, or something. But that's kind of the point, right? Wherever your Pi project takes you, you can take the RazPad along for the ride. Is it worth it? I think so. You just need to set your expectations properly. This isn't an iPad. It's a tool meant for hackers, makers, and educators. It's heftier than an iPad, but that's kind of the point. You still want to use a wired or wireless keyboard and mouse for doing a lot of things. After all, unless you're logged into your Pi remotely, nobody wants to code on an on-screen keyboard. If you want a Raspberry Pi tablet, this is probably the one to get. It's plug and play and just sort of works. Would have been nice if they released one that used the compute module instead. Then it would have been even thinner. If you don't know much about the compute module, it's basically a Raspberry Pi 3 without the ports and measuring about the size of a stick of RAM. But that's a story for another day. Now if you enjoyed our review of the SunFounder Raspad, be sure to check it out via the link in the video description. And also if you enjoyed our review, perhaps you'd like to subscribe and learn more cool things. We do Pi projects all the time, like this scary Amazon Echo Furby and this NES cartridge thing that is also a Pi. Anyways, as always, thanks for watching.